Admiral's log, date, October 26th, 1910. We have finally had an encounter that we can write up as a total victory. The destroyer V6 was able to torpedo the British battlecruiser Thunderer. That name, Thunderer, that was more prophetic than was initially foreseen. After she was hit by a volley of torpedoes, her ammo detonated and she suffered several flash fires. The rumbling explosion could be heard many miles away from Thunderer's position. We even had several fishing boats radio in asking what was going on. It must have been hell to be on that ship. First, the impact from the torpedoes, steel warping and groaning under the extreme pressures of the icy cold water entering the ruptured hull, then the detonation of her ammunition. I bet this caused many a ruptured eardrum, although at this point the ship had probably already lost a good portion of her crew. And finally the flash fires, hotter than hell, perhaps the most merciful way to go. I don't bear any ill will to the sailors manning these ships, they're exactly like our sailors, men serving their country and fighting to stay alive on the sea together. And yet, I've just been informed that we're about to do it all over again, as a lightly protected merchant convoy has been intercepted by several of our ships. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to episode 4 of the German campaign. What I have done off screen is reassign several of my ships. If you go into the fleet screen, you can see that some of these ships are now switched to in-being as opposed to sea control. So the König Albert and the Kurfürst Friedrich Wilhelm are doing their business mostly inside of the ports of Kiel and Danzig, only venturing out when there is an actual threat. This hopefully will save my naval budget, which is not doing that well. I am gaining 1.5 million, and I still want to spend quite a bit more on crew training but I really cannot afford to do that much more. Having cadet level crew is always a problem, and of course not having a tech budget is even more crippling. Fortunately, we can also cripple the British. We have a convoy here, and two of my heavy cruisers have intercepted a heavy cruiser and two light cruisers, as well as 10 transports. So let's do some damage against the British merchantmen. We have already seen that the heavy cruisers are more than capable of inflicting serious damage to those ships in an extremely quick fashion as well. The 7-inch guns and 5-inch guns can also make hopefully quick work of the light cruisers. I would love to take a couple of bites out of those ships, if not just completely sink them, to make sure that the British um, ability to project power on the North Sea and the Baltic Sea goes down. Because as it stands, I'm still blockaded. The German Empire is not doing very well when it comes to supplies. Here we go. First convoy ship has been detected. I didn't see an R next to these ships that are supposedly escorting these. R apparently means reinforcing, which means it's going to take them a little bit of time to get there. But these things didn't have it. So it's likely that we'll still see those convoy ships, these escort ships, not too far away from these merchantmen. For now though, it's just these 10 merchantmen. Which are desperately starting to turn tail. Utterly uninterested in uh, seeing our German cruisers up close. Now hopefully this will also generate a bit of XP for the Lippa and the Steer. Because so far, I'm still operating with cadets. And it is already almost a year into the campaign. I really don't like that. I want to be having much, much more experienced sailors now. Now, as can be expected, the, the ships, as they're designed to deal with convoys, can do this without really any kind of a difficulty. It's against the light cruisers that the battle is going to make... Uh, well, it's going to turn interesting there. Not too much later, we find ourselves almost in the middle of a convoy. And a couple of the escort ships have started materializing, such as this light cruiser here. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first light cruiser that we've seen. They are armed with 7-inch guns only, and a whole slew of 2-inch guns. 22 2-inch guns. Depending on the speed of these things, they could be an absolute menace to my convoys. They are, especially at short range, I mean, these 2-inch guns have, what, 3? No, 5 kilometer range. Um, they can very, very quickly eliminate a ship. Any convoy ship, that is. Speaking of convoy ships, I'm going to make that my main mission. So the secondaries are going to target the Vigorous, the Lochinvar, and the Royal Arthur. 
to try and close the distance on the light cruiser here. The heavy cruiser should also be around. No, that's not a heavy cruiser. Or is it? Do the Brits have... Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. Do the Brits have more than one heavy cruiser? No, it's a light cruiser. It's the Flora. Uh, we can't have this guy escape here. We really can't. Flooding on the Lippa. Oh, crap. Even with these 7-inch guns on my heavy cruisers, I'm struggling to deal damage against the Flora? How? That's really not what I was expecting to see. She has a maximum of 3.2 inches on the main belt, 1.7 and 1.6 on fore and aft belt, plus 73%. Come on, these cruisers were designed to take on these threats. They shouldn't have any kind of difficulty taking down a light cruiser. I guess that the, um, the somewhat light 7-inch guns are simply not sufficient. Also, you probably have a six kilometer range and you just popped it. So that means that the flora has torpedoes in the water. There they are. Fire everything that we have at the flora. I want you to take down the owl. And yeah, that one's down. I need to be careful not to sink all the transport ships because then the mission immediately ends. And that's not what I want. The owl is down. We're gonna let the North Esk survive. Chance to pen is still 50%? That's uh, pretty underwhelming. And in reverse, it's not that much better or worse for them. Come on, Lippa. Get some damage in. I'm not firing HE. I'm firing AP. Well, a bit of a mix. But I do expect a lot more than just a little bit of structural damage here and there. How survivable are these? Maximum bulkheads. Okay. So they're a lot more survivable than I might like. All your guns on the steer. Oh, flash fire. There you go. That's a fantastic quick way to get rid of a ship. Or at least her firepower. She just popped her stern 7-inch. These are 5.3 million for a ship. They're almost as expensive as my heavy cruiser? Wow. That is impressive. So what sort of tech do you have on here that makes them so expensive? Advanced radio. Heavy shells, Citadel 2, Anti-Flood 2, Barbette 3? The British are very serious about protecting their light cruisers. Ironically. And another ammo detonation. Come on. I don't expect to be able to take on the heavy cruiser because we have seen just how well these heavy cruiser designs do against their heavy cruisers. So ideally I'd take down the Flora and then switch fire to the North Esk, which is their last convoy ship, and just call it a day. Because then I come out ahead by not only sinking their convoy, but also getting rid of one of their light cruisers. Theseus is still hammering me with 9-inch guns. And yes, these crews are trained. These are more dangerous. More floodings. Very nice. I could really use a couple of wins this, this uh, video. Because so far, I haven't really been doing so well. Another flash fire. What did you launch this time? Your other 7? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the ship is uh, basically disarmed. Her 7-inch guns are both gone. Her 3-inch guns are still functional, and I suspect that quite a few of the 2-inchers are still working. But with that list, I'm not sure if she's able to fire them. No, she is. It's perfectly fine. 
Okay, just keep hitting the flora. Causing a loss of a trained crew of almost 700 sailors. As well as getting rid of a uh, oh, pretty expensive light cruiser at that. 5.3 million. Come on, Flora, you fought a good fight. Now it's done. Okay, let's target the North Esk. And then just be on our way, because the Lippa has taken quite a bit of damage. So I'm mostly going to let the Steer do the damage here. Seeing as the Theseus is coming in with a vengeance. She has basically watched as these two heavy cruisers have destroyed almost all of her protectees. And she is probably pretty annoyed at the prospect of coming home and having to report mission failure without even being able to get any kind of kills on the German ships that did the raiding. Come on, North Esk. 7% buoyancy. I don't care if we flood it or burn it. Just has to go. Lip is being covered by the steer. There's more flooding. She's down to 5%, 2%. Done. Mission accomplished. There we go. Job done. Interestingly, that no longer ends the battle. Okay. Normally, or at least previously, it would immediately end the battle and making it so that uh, your ships just escape. But maybe there's been a patch that changed that, leaving me to fight these escort ships. Now, my plan here is to hit and cripple the dragon, ideally sinking her, of course, but, well, we know how all that one's gonna go. Shit. Um, the Theseus can only do 21.8 knots. Sorry, 21.2. She's fairly slow. My heavies can do 28 knots. Uh, the Lippa can still do 20 knots, which is pretty good, considering she's taken some damage and flooding. So I would just like to disengage once I've slowed down their faster ship a bit. How heavy, how, how expensive is the Theseus? 7.1? Good lord. You guys don't do anything small, do you? Ow! Oh no. Um, it might be time for the steer to beat a retreat. Because she has suffered flooding and she has misplaced her A turret. Shall we say. 10% of the crew has been lost. Considering that I just lost an entire turret, I think it's actually pretty mild, <laughs> the amount of crew that I lost, as well as the floodings on the bow. There's the rest of the torpedoes from the dragon. As long as these guys don't come after me, I should be safe. I can still do about 20 knots, same as the other ship, the Lippa. Oh no, that's not helpful. My aft belt is not up to this. Aft belt's 0.5 inch. These ships are designed to basically charge right into a convoy, plunder it, and get out. They're not really designed for an extended fight. Conditions? Hmm. It's clear weather in daytime. It's morning, so it's not like I'll be able to slip away under the cover of night. This is effectively a success, but it's going to come at some maintenance cost to the steer and the lipper. Now, just as with the battle cruiser that I sunk in the previous episode, the British have lost a lot of crew members. 1944 were killed, as opposed to 130 of mine. Lots of victory points were scored, 837 versus 22. And this should also mean that our ships are getting some nice amount of experience, 25 each. So hopefully they'll be slowly but steadily getting that veterancy up to an acceptable level. And yep, the crew training is now green. So that they'll be able to be, um, let's say, more accurate next time around. Well, insofar as that's useful, because we don't have a turret on one of these ships. Vulnerable convoy, job done. Um, that was the Lippa for two months, and the Steer for another two months. 
It's not too bad, but we're down another 600k. Okay, fine. Reduce it slightly. Next month. Another convoy. Wow. Why did the British have so many convoys here? Because this is just a perfect opportunity to continue to raid them. I love it. Let's do it. Oh, it's the Antrim again. And the Theseus. Interesting. I can also finally put the heavy cruiser to the test against their intended target, which is a destroyer. I haven't actually seen these guys perform. So I'm not sure how well they're going to do with the 4 and the 5s and the 2s against the DDs. But, I'm sorry, DD, singular. But I do expect great things of them. Now, I need to sink 75% of transports. For some reason, not 100, as before. But okay. I'm going to try and do a bit more of an elegant torpedo attack on the enemy heavy cruisers. Meaning, I'm going to try and drop torpedoes in front of them, as opposed to chasing behind them. And here we go. The first thing we encounter is a uh, heavy cruiser. And we have been detected. I'm going to let these guys charge right in. I'm going to let the DD not charge in. Because I want the heavy cruisers to draw all the fire. Smoke up. I need you alive. Even if you're only operating with cadets. If we can sink another one of those 7.1 million heavy cruisers, that would be a big win. There. There. That's the target. That's the DD. What sort of an armament do you have? What the fuck is up with that barbette? Okay. Torpedoes. Dual tubes on the stern. That seems to be it. Okay, that's good. That is very good. Starboard turn. Gently. Focus all two inches on that destroyer. V10? Not yet. Not yet, buddy. Let's come back left. Port turn. All guns on the destroyer. There. Torpedoes in the water. Wow. Already? These heavy cruiser designs of mine are terrible. Absolutely terrible. Uh, yeah, let's not accidentally run our own destroyer into the torpedo, shall we? I should be able to make this gap. And they carry, what, two torps? Yeah, they got a reduced ammo of torps. Okay. It's 1.7 million for a DD, for the lasso. So yeah, that works. Off you go. It seems that the heavy cruiser Antrim is this time properly distracted. So maybe we can just get close enough. The lasso is proving pretty difficult to sink. Well, to hit at all. Oh, crap. No, 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 no. Need you alive. Ideally with a smoke screen, but that's going to be another three minutes. Oh, come on, cadets, hit something. Shit. Flooding. Flash fire on the DD. <laughs> okay. This is going to go down to extensive fire, I think. Yep. Oh, crap. Okay, let's turn. I hope we can pump that water back out, because I really would appreciate the use of both of those engines. Range, three kilometers. More flooding. Oh, come on. Increase the best speed. Smoke screen in 150. Flooding on the Theseus. One compartment. Very good. Not yet. More flooding. Bow compartment. Not yet. 
1.8 kilometers. We need to, to be almost on top of them. Even if I am in a pretty decent torpedo angle, slightly ahead of the ship, it's still very possible for these guys to just completely dodge. One click out, 900 meters, torpedoes away. Hard to starboard. V10 turning. Theseus turning to port. Not fast enough, Theseus. Dead. Theseus destroyed. Well done to the V10. Very well done. Now I need to find out where the rest of the convoy is at. Yeah, you can slow down. Get healed up. Or at least see if you can fix some of that flooding. Where's the convoy? Because that's where we came here to sink. The convoy. Now, as the battle progresses, I'm desperately trying to save the V-10, but the ship is just too heavily damaged. And as I was hoping to get her back online with the torpedo launchers, we still haven't reached that point by a long shot. So, the Rune and the Rhineland have kind of given up the chase on the convoy, which I think is somewhere behind me. But I'm going to try and ram the Antrim. Because trying to wear them down with gunfire is going to take forever. And the V-10 doesn't have forever. If I can ram this ship, and even if I lose one of my heavy cruisers, I think it could be worth it. Smoke screen in about 100 seconds. Come on. Go get him, Rune. Go get him. This ship has taken 2.3k damage. I don't expect her to be an actual fighting force anymore, but I just need to make sure that she survives. Because that fight, that torpedo attack, will probably have gained her 25 XP, which seems to be the max. So that means I can get a bit more veteran crew out of her. Not veteran, but at least trained or green. 2.8k damage taken. The Antrim is still pretty accurate, despite me being in a smokescreen. I've just... oh crap. I've given up trying to pen this Antrim uh, cruiser. Yeah, there goes the V-10. Because I simply don't expect to be able to do it. So I'm only firing high explosive at her. Which means it's going to take way more time. These guys are very well built. Main belt, 8.3, 4 belt, 5, aft belt, one, sorry, 4.1. They even got a lot of deck armor. That's why they're not fast. They're tanks. They're slow, lumbering, heavy cruisers. Which can definitely take a beating and a half. But as we've seen before, very few ships can survive a ram. If I just sink two heavy cruisers, I don't strictly need to sink the convoy. Or at least it's not a great priority for me yet. Because these things are taking, I don't know, 15, 16 months to build. With that much displacement and that much upgrades. So hopefully, I can slowly but steadily just dismantle the British fleet and make them a non-issue. A non well, <laughs> we haven't quite reached that stage yet. Come on, you know it's coming. 86% structural integrity after taking 100 hits. Come on. It's coming for that booty. Enter him. Stop. Stop. Come on. <laughs> Stop doing itchy damage. Uh, speaking of, I need you to cease fire for a second before you blow up your friendly. Ah! No! No, 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 no. I do not want any kind of damage collision or damage avoidance.
Go on. Do we have a ramming bow? Maybe. Have at it. We could make it a group hug with the Rhineland as well. I cannot do damage against my own ships. Antrim is flooding. Further damage as well. Now you can fire, by the way. Rune has taken some damage, but not nearly as bad as the Antrim has. Sadly, I'm not really in a good position anymore. Yeah, we're gonna intercept the Antrim again. It's a bit of an unusual tactic, this, but it does work. Well, he said, and he missed the ram. Oh, well. Structural integrity down to 56%. Oops. Sorry about that. I still had my WhatsApp web running. Now, Rune. You got rudder damage on the entrance, but she's still limping away. Ideally, I want to Rune to be able to ram her again, so that I don't have floodings on the Rhineland. Because after this ship is done... I still have a potential convoy to sink. And I need at least one ship fast enough to catch it. Even though the transports are only doing 15 knots-ish. Damn it. Come on. Keep pushing. bit less. Antrim has lost 12% of her crew, which is terrible. Her damage control... <laughs> her damage control is still better than usual. Oh, crap. There's the flooding on the Rhineland that I did not want. Okay. Prepare to board. Drive me closer. I'm going to hit them with my swords. March starboard. If we can inflict some ramming on the bow, that'd be lovely. Someone just pointed out in the comment section, you can actually see the other ship on the, the damage screen there. It's done a bit of damage, but it's not good enough. Stop firing at your friendly. The Antrim is down to 31% structural integrity. I'm probably trying to limp away. We're not having that. Rune, time to come in for the third attempt. If only I had equipped these heavy cruisers with torpedo launchers. This would have been such a different fight. But I completely forgot to do that. Now it's going to be pretty close to see whether the Rune can survive another encounter with the Antrim. She might. I do have the bulkheads for it. My concern is I'm going to lose a lot more structural integrity. And I don't have that much left. Yeah, you're going to have to cease fire for a bit. Here we go again. Round three. They've now lost 18.9%. And yet, their control is still excellent. They, uh, they got spacious quarters. They got a bunch of reserve crew. Rune down to 43%. Antrim 28. Have at it. Wreck that ship. Hard to port. 14, 13, 12, 9. <laughs> you can see the other ship on the damage profile. Ah, it looks like we got him, boys. Job well done. Oh, rune! 4%. Oh, the rune survived. But only just. Good lord. Crew losses. 267 versus 1927. 
they have lost both heavy cruisers and destroyer and supposedly not the transports because I wasn't able to get a uh, to have a go at them nevertheless I hope that this will persuade the British that we are actually quite potent with these heavy cruisers you just have to use the cruiser itself as a weapon instead of relying on her weapon systems now the poor rune uh, she is out for five months yikes I'm going to switch you from sea control to in being. But of course, since I'm repairing, it doesn't really matter. I could scrap the whole ship. But the ship being in repairs for five months is probably preferential to building, for example, another one of the York classes. Because building a York takes 13 months. And it's basically all hands on deck at this stage. I need as many ships as I can. Yeah, so I cannot really afford not to have the ship come back as soon as possible. Right. Okay, well, that's a concern for a different day. This is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon for more videos.